All right, let's talk business right now. I actually told you before we went on that break that we are going to be looking at the importance of having an extra source of income. Wisdom Elder is our guest. He's a business analyst. Wisdom Elder, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon, yes. All right, now, as a successful businessman, why is it important to have a side business? Well, the truth is uh, the economy is not funny. Polit policies are always changing. Inflation is always increasing. The value of uh, our currency is always depleting. So it's obvious that if you have just one source of uh, income, you might, uh, you might always have <laughs> for some level of uh, uh, challenges when sometimes when you have economic uh, upheavals. So it's very necessary. Multiple streams of income has been the in thing even before we started seeing uh, this democratic dispensation. In developed uh, countries, uh, it has always been there. People have always uh, embraced multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. People have always embraced working from their homes. And uh, even governments have always supported uh, people to have, uh, even professionals, to also have a side hustle, a side trade that they run, aside from whatever they practice, like lawyers in developed countries, even uh, 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 senators and Federal House of Rep members in developed countries, you know. and. Uh, all the top uh, governors mentioned, these people also have other source of income that helps them to also beat up economic challenges. And it's not, uh, there's no restriction that says you cannot do other kinds of businesses. There's no restriction. You can also handle different things. There's no also restriction that says there's a certain business that is left for a certain class of persons. Okay, now, now talking yeah. about restriction, mm. in other in other country, developed mm. land, mm -hmm. uh, people double tax. Mm -hmm. They do more than one job. Yeah, you see, you have, you have people who are um, running two, three jobs, and they still go to school. Yeah, uh, but drawing it back home, do you think it's advisable or ideal for <laughs> working class mm -hmm. people to venture into? Uh, side hustling. All right. Uh, I always have this policy that the the context I approach when I'm talking about entrepreneurship in Nigeria mm. is actually far more different from the context of approach if I'm talking about entrepreneurship let's let's in, get, let's in a developed let's country. Because Nigeria, we have so many uncertainties. We don't have established systems. We don't have infrastructures. We don't have uh, uh, lay down, you know, enabling environments for entrepreneurs to thrive. We don't even have the banking system that supports you. We don't even have uh, some manufacturers. Like, I remember those days when I wrote my first book. Mm. I, after writing my first book, I went, I, I followed it through to publishing, hoping that once I'm done with publishing, I'm going to maybe Hand, hand over and people will run the marketing and all. But after writing the first book, publishing and all, I realized that I am still going to have a, a very good audience in order to boost my marketing, mm -hmm. the marketing of the book. And it was difficult for me to see people or publishers that could take up the book, market and pay me Partner royalty. You. Yes, mm -hmm. and pay me royalty. So, and I realized how long it took me also mm -hmm. to get that book out. Writing the book was not a problem for me because I'm a split writer. Okay. But the, the problem was for me to, from the time I finished writing to the final stage of editing, proofreading, you know, publishing and arranging everything. So after that, that was a very serious hurdle. Mm. I faced launching. After facing launching, I now faced marketing. That was when I saw most people, some musicians, after singing their songs, they would still be battling on, you know, going on the streets, the market, buy the, <laughs> going on the streets, them. performing those mm. songs. So, so I was like, oh, so many people who have written books that do not have 
a good audience, mm. like maybe maybe it's church people, for example, or maybe they are not well placed in society to have that capacity to attract larger audience. They have to face the challenge of carrying out the market, marketing of exactly. the books from one location to mm. another. So these are challenges where in, in some societies, all these things are already established. Mm. People take them up, up for, for you and they run everything. They publish, they market, and they pay royalties. You, you just, you can keep writing. So that alone may, can make you to stop writing. That alone can make you, for now, writing, please hold on because <laughs> if i if i have to use one or two years to do this mm -hmm. and then i will have to run some needs and some personal uh, responsibilities within that one or two years and if this is not what is going to put the real food on my table against my expectation then you understand i have to make sure those those projects that are short term will have to be uh, established so that i can be able to run every other thing so writing became a, a kind of either mid-term or long-term uh, project in, in, in our society. Mm -hmm. Whereas in most other places, it's an Im immediate thing. You know, people get in and then publishing houses, they do the publishing, you know, and so on. Though today we are embracing technology, course, Amazon, Amazon is, there. is there, and then people can really start getting online to, to publish. So that is actually the kind of challenge we have. Aside from that, I remember when uh, there was this concept of introducing so many products that mm. were not existing all over the world. And I had a lot of young people who had so, such ideas. But then the, there was no uh, manufacturer, there was no uh, brander, there was no molding uh, outlets here in Nigeria. Mm. And some of those product ideas just fizzled out. So, but if they were not in the, so if I'm teaching entrepreneurship in Nigeria, I will have to be telling you how to start with nothing, how to beat the odds in Nigerian market, how that's, to- That's where motivational speaking Yes, yeah, comes yes, it's, it's, it's beyond motivational mm. speaking. It's beyond just telling you, you can make it or you can succeed. Look, the fact remains that if I tell you, you can make it, you can succeed, and I'm not ready to make you understand how mm. in our context okay. some people some people one out of 1000 survived they succeeded now we are trying to draw a line between <laughs> working class people, yes mm -hmm. uh, this same working class people trying to get something extra mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. boost their income yes yes now, yes is it possible to strike a balance work is demanding <laughs> you have a lot to do on your decks and is it still possible to still go after an extra source of income. Yes, very, very, very possible. How? It's very possible for somebody who is who has a job already to go after another source of income. Very possible. In fact, the fact that you have a job means you have an, an income that you can begin to build towards another uh, means of income. An entrepreneur is different. An entrepreneur is somebody who does not have a safety net beneath him. No safety net. He's a risk taker. He has 100 million today and tomorrow he's broke. That's an entrepreneur because okay. he's always investing. He can see an opportunity and then he sell off. If you remember the time of Elon Musk when he was trying to boost his uh, SpaceX and uh, Tesla, he had to sell off a lot of other things. Even his house in Florida, he had to sell off. And at a time, he was, not, he was <laughs> homeless. But he's even saying recently that he's going to step aside as the... Of yeah, yeah. So, so at the time he was homeless, but the, the beauty of it is that you have something you are pursuing. So most entrepreneurs, if you see them at the formative stage, at the packaging pro planning stage, at the project stage, they might not be they might not be looking attractive. So that is it. But the person who is working might be living in a very safety world because every month he gets his salary and so on. But I want to encourage that that person who is actually working and getting money in his own, in his own time, he might be feeling secured. But in the world of uh, money, he is the person that is taking the most risk because in a, in, at the long run, he would have been left with nothing and the entrepreneur would have 
actually employed multiple persons and would have boosted his level of income. So there must be a period where you have to, so for the person who is working, look into the area you want to go into, get to learn, get to be trained. You have your job now, so you can afford to pay instrumentally for, for trainings mm -hmm. over areas that you want to be, get a, a, a proficiency in. You need to be trained. After the training, then you also need to set up. You understand? So you set up and uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. You, you know why I say it's a challenge? Why? Yeah, there's a difference between small business owners and uh, big business owners and investors. Mm -hmm. A small business owner his business makes money as more as far as that business is operating, is opening. That's a small business owner. And such kind of person, if like somebody has a concept for a small business, for example, most of the people who make money from that small business ownership are the people who are running that businesses for the owner. So the person who is there. Who is running? Sometimes the business might not have been planned in such a way or structured in such a way that there, there, there could be money coming into the owner's pocket, even though he's not the one there. So the directly. person, yeah, directly. So the person who is there will be the one that will know where, where they are buying products, how they are selling, and running a lot of things. And at the end of the day, the person can outsmart his boss. That's the challenge of small business owners. So if I want to encourage most, uh, most uh, workers to start their own businesses, mm -hmm. I know they will enter into this uh, quagmire of uh, the small business owner whereby they will want to employ somebody and so on and so forth. But thank God technology has made a lot of things mm -hmm. easier. You can run your businesses while you are in your home. You can even monitor. I, I, I see a man uh, that has a uh, CCTV you understand he, he runs a fashion fashion also so he has a cctv all over he and he mon activities. yes he monitors activities from his phone mm -hmm. so all his workers are always busy anyone that is not busy or anyone that is taking time to run through Extra things time. He, he takes his phone and call what's going on you know so and so on now there are so many strategies as well coming online is also there outsourcing giving giving targets to people is also there so now and another challenge we have for people who are working, learning a skill or learning a trade is one thing, but the ability to, to manage or grow a business is totally different. Talk, talking about technology, yeah. uh, we see so many negative business popping up on your social media platform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You just turn on your internet and you just start seeing some kind of link to businesses that doesn't exist so how can you how can an individual deduce the kind of business they should go into owing to the fact that we have multiple multiple businesses all right i always advise you start from the area of your strength you understand start from the area of your strength start from the areas you have passion into start from the areas you have interest on all right yeah start from the areas you have passion into, start from the areas you have interest on, is very important. Mm -hmm. And like I said, get trained. But understand that your skill is okay. not enough. Your ability to manage All right, your with, business with, with Amelda, we'll, we'll, quickly, we'll quickly take a short break now. And when we're back, we continue to ensure the front line of this discussion that gone away. All right, thank you so much for staying with us. Still business this week. And of course, we're talking business. Important of having a side hustle. And yeah, Wisdom Elder has been doing justice to the talking point. Wisdom Elder, uh, we actually asked you the kind of business people should venture into. Mm. And you were telling us we have different kind of business, big yes. business, small yes. business, and they should uh, go for the one that their strength can take. Let's quickly yes. wrap it up from there. Yes, I, 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 I am going to emphasize more on training for the business and getting entrepreneurship skill. Entrepreneurship mm. skill is not the skill for your trade. Entrepreneurship skill has to do with your capacity to run a business. 
a business person, an entrepreneur, has knowledge of the legal aspect of business. He has little knowledge of accounting. Mm -hmm. He has knowledge of marketing. He, and marketing has to do with both digital marketing and the offline marketing. He has knowledge of management and he has knowledge of, of leadership. You understand? He has a, a lot of other ideas on so many other things and he knows how to upgrade himself. These are the things that you will not learn if you are going through skill acquisition training. Mm. So, so these and these things are required in order for you to run your businesses successfully. Now, why I say that is because a man who has gotten the skill can go out there, rent a shop, ex open up the shop, fit in everything into the shop, and start running his business. That person is running a trade. But the person who has acquired the entrepreneurship and business management uh, strategies and all will take his business beyond just a shop. He will run a dynamic business that has vision, that has goal, that has focus, and that has a target, and that knows the, 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 the strategies on how to outsmart the competition. He knows his market, he knows his context, and he knows how to ask more. So all these things are relevant. Like take, for example, there are some ways you do that you don't actually do them in Benin. Some people do them from outside Benin. Well, you, you, the yes, and, and they package you. So that is because somebody has learned the act of marketing and d digital marketing and advertisement. Mm -hmm. So he knows how to get his customers from beyond his immediate environment. And that is not in the skill acquisition training. You understand? So if someone is learning, trying to build himself and build his capacity as an entrepreneur, he has to understudy every every aspect of that every aspect that can be related to running and managing and growing your business you okay, now talking about running and managing yes who should go into side housing who married women <laughs> business people working class students all right i i think uh, this question was asked uh, donald trump he said who do you advise to go into entrepreneurship that's mm. to start your own business he looked he was initially he was suggesting that everybody should start their own business but at a time he realized that there are some people who do not have the capacity to take a level of risk okay. as far as life is concerned those people he can advise them to manage their the life risk, with risk in yes what sense now? yes if you cannot take risk if you cannot see yourself sometimes going <laughs> going broke and, <laughs> and and then you are not comfortable because there are so many people out there that are not comfortable with going broke there are so many people out there that can be embarrassed with just little uh, economic challenges and and all and they they might just want security though security is not is not the best but some people you don't have to advise them to go beyond their limit because they might not have that capacity to exceed that limit. So some of them, if they venture into that level of risk, they might uh, have health challenges and they might die. Yeah, there are some people like that. So, but I advise that even when you have the money, you can also learn some areas that you intend to invest into. Mm. You don't want to practice it. You don't want to go out to trade, but have proper information in areas that you want to invest because we talked about small business big business and investors so the investor right now is the one that uses his money to work for him while he's sleeping he doesn't really need to be there the money is working so you might need to get proper information in certain areas that you intend to invest your money into so that okay. while you are asleep your money is working for you. Mm. You understand? So you are far much different from the other person. But you know that to be an investor, you must have actually acquired so, enough. So, so do you need enough capital to go into business? <coughs> no, 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 no. All you need is a willpower. Willpower. Willpower, you have the courage, Without you have finance. the willpower. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I, I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you with confidence mm. that what you need to start your own business, the willpower, first of all, I want to start. I'm not talking of finance now. You need that willpower. You need that courage. 
and then you need to define the area you want to go into. Now, let me tell people, a lot of people are making mistakes. Yes, after school, then you start writing, applying. Sometimes you just need to step into some places that you desire to work in and begin to act. There's this, uh, I think there's this, uh, it's Les Brown, right? It should be Les Brown. He said each time the man came into the studio, the, re the recording studio, he will ask, is there any job for me? They will say, no job, please go out. He will go out. The next day he, he comes back, is there any job for me? They said, no job. You know, until the, 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 the day came, he came into the studio and because he wanted to be a presenter. Okay. And he said, is there any job? And that day, the man became so bored. He said, my friend, just go make yourself useful. Take the stuff and start cleaning the environment. So he started cleaning the environment. And from there, a day came when a presenter was not on set. And they said, can you just be on set? He said, no problem. And he has been preparing. And that was it. He used the shot and he got the job and he started. So there are places you want to work you must not be looking to get money first that's the problem first, yes yes you, you must not be looking for to get money first before you can put yourself into that track like an entrepreneur for example i might want to identify myself with a particular kind of business i know that is my responsibility to get to know those who are practicing that kind of business and get to understudy them if possible pay to go closer to them and then understudy how they are running their business. But the man who is looking for job does not also want to go closer to places that might have the kind of prospects that he desires and probably see if he can even identify with them from any given, you, you understand me? So you do not, the, the, the last thing, the last thing, after all, entrepreneur needs this capital after all but you need your experiences you need the knowledge you need the skill you need the training on how on the businesses you want to start after all then you start talking about the capital so capital let, is let, relevant let's, and start, necessary. Let's, let's start quickly taking yeah. advice because mm -hmm. i know someone is watching now okay and um, they might be thinking where can i go from how am i going to start mm -hmm. advice quickly so All right. attending, uh, entrepreneur. Now, there are so many. I always say it's like you have your phones there. You type in so many, type in a lot of things, different kinds of businesses I can run from home. If you type it in your Google, you will see all of them. And some of them you want to get training on, take some of those tips they provide there, go to YouTube and type those tips there. You will see how to start this and how to start that. You can even see people who have started it. For you free. can contact them hmm. just on your phone now in your house. I'm not talking of going far. You can contact them. That is one. Number two. You want to go into like a trading fashion, like fashion wares and all the rest of them. You want to go into trading them. What you need is just to have a picture and a price of all those products. And then you start building your own uh, uh, network community. Now, aside from that, get trained, look for people who have already accomplished what you desire to accomplish. Get along with those people, get to know how they are doing it. And then the, in every field, in every business, there is a secret. And that secret is in the hands of those who have made it in those areas of, 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 uh, of businesses. Those secrets are with them. So get closer to them. If you watch the apprentice, uh, apprenticeship uh, strategy that uh, the uh, Igbos adopt, is you know, is is really empowering people more than even some of the trainings we get from business schools here and there. At the end of the day, I, I was uh, listening to someone that wanted to take an exam on entrepreneurship. I was listening and I was hearing so many things. You know, at the end of the day, we finally bring people who are not entrepreneurs to come and lecture on entrepreneurship in our schools, and and it's going to be a bizarre. It's going to be a disaster because the person who is teaching entrepreneurship has not yeah, built yes, businesses good. successfully, mm. has not undergone street challenges and economic challenges. He has not even understood how to even start with nothing. 
And at the end of the day, when I mean start with nothing, I don't really mean that at the end of the day you don't have anything. When I mean start with nothing, take for example, uh, you can walk into a, a business place. Take for example, I can walk into your shop today and I negotiate a lot about what you sell. And I tell you that I want to be bringing customers to you, but I want pictures of this. I will take snap of all these things and the prices, and I'll be bringing customers to you. I'll be coming to pick your product. That is starting. You, you won't decline. Yeah, that is starting with nothing. Mm. I've seen people who go into shopping mall to spend money, buy and go. But I've seen people who go into shopping mall to just get a picture of everything and get the prices and go home and then start marketing. You see, ah, this kind of tea can give you flat tummy. And before you know it, people will start ordering for flat tummy tea. But it's, it's just there in the shop, but people cannot. So when I mean starting with nothing, I mean entering into a company that has some little challenges and telling them some things you can do to solve their challenges. Even those who are in comedy, mm. who are running comedy skits, they are also starting with nothing, you know, and, mm. and uh, 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 as well as people who are, who are training themselves in, uh, in soccer, who are training themselves in music, they are starting with nothing. So okay. an entrepreneur needs, first of all, the willpower that, yes, I want to start. And then you can start by getting an okrika, mm. coming to wash them, iron them, and then sell them for, <laughs> for okay, package uh, share. With, with the, with the matter, I know if I leave you, uh, we'll still talk down till mm. midnight. We'll be, mm. our, our next episode, we'll try to look at building a business from scratch. Wow. Yes, we'll try to take it from there. Wow. Since it's possible to be an entrepreneur and you can still work, mm -hmm. we'll now start looking at the areas of building business from scratch, wow. how to build a business from scratch. Mm -hmm. We'll try to do that. With the matter, thank you so much. Okay. By the way, you look good. Hey, I think thanks. you should be the DPO now. <laughs> <laughs> I should be the IG. <laughs> Maybe I should, I should be the IP. <laughs> I, I like your outfit. Thank you for right, thank taking you. time to join us. All right, thank you All right, for having this me. This we'll be joining the court in for yeah. business this week, reaching live from ITV. You do have yourself a beautiful weekend ahead. I am Daniel Price. Bye for now.